I think the big question people want to know is what time you left Oaklawn <laughs> and drove through the night again uh, yeah. to come um, through these horses work. You know, left right after a super stock in the Oaklawn Handicap. Uh, uneventful drive, you know. Um, very happy that the weather has cooperated so well on uh, our scheduled work days and racetrack's excellent shape this morning. So obviously was very anxious to get here. How long does it take to drive from there? <laughs> I think it's supposed to take you about eight hours. <laughs> you were less? Well, no, nah, eight hours. That's what I did. <laughs> <laughs> I was curious. About that eight hours. Yeah. It's a haul. Yeah. Two weeks out is you're famous for having a getting a stiff most work. significant work for us. Absolutely, you know it's uh, you know following a pattern that um, we're very comfortable with. I, I love the rhythm that this uh, these horses are in. Um, both of them have kept their same workmates from New Orleans this winter, and uh, I just uh, can't you know unbelievably appreciative of the job uh, Wilson and Eddie have done and uh, you know helping get them to this point and putting in them what, uh, exactly what we're looking for. They had really good works last week. Yes. And then looked like really good works this week. Yeah. So, so what What were you looking for in this work well, versus I, last week? I mean, week? We're, you know, they're both start out just, you know, tremendous prospects and individuals. And uh, I think that what we're aiming for with them um, is incremental improvement. You know, just don't want to take too big of a leap forward. So everything is, um, you know, a building block to success. And I think that uh, since they um, have arrived here at Churchill, uh, that trend has continued. I was so, you know, excited with uh, Echo Zulu's first work here. You know, three words. It's just her third work since. But because she'd never been here before. You know, she had went for, straight from Keeneland to Saratoga and then ran at Belmont and went to California. So uh, I love how she went to the racetrack. Echo Zoo, uh, Epicenter, we expected that from all the training he had here last fall as well as a couple races. What did you see in Epicenter early on that made you think he had what you have now? Well, he's, well, he's a beautiful mover. You know, he's just a, a really attractive horse that uh, is very physical. You know, he took, uh, takes everything he does with uh, a great amount of ease, you know has always uh, maintained, uh, uh, you know, uh, just a, a very forward step, you know, he just, uh, and I think that he has, from last fall to him arriving here, uh, you can tell the difference in his confidence level and just his demeanor from when he was here last fall. You know, being a, you know, a attractive horse that was a good mover, uh, to a horse that looks a, a lot more mature and confident. How much of that was the race experience? I think it's the success that helped him, you know, um, success in his races. And then um, Kent's, uh, his opportunity in the Louisiana Derby to stalk and not uh, be overly aggressive in the middle uh, uh, is very good to see considering how much pace is in this race. Obviously you're, you know, 20 runners in the Derby post position draw um, will matter uh, who's where, but uh, hopefully he's away from there cleanly. But uh, with the success he's had in the last couple of races and showing a, a variable style, uh, it gives you a, you know, some, one less thing to worry about. Only a few people living today know how tough it is to win the Kentucky Derby. <laughs> You're one of them. I mean, the couple of the horses you brought were horses of the year, yeah, yeah, Hall of absolutely. Fame horses. and and. Uh, so sort of in that context and with having Epicenter this year. Right. Yeah, um, we're 0 for 23 in the Derby. You know, it hasn't been to consider the fact that I've been allowed to run uh, Curlin and Gunrunner in the Derby, both of them third place finishes and then going on to the careers that they've had. Is I've had horses that were good enough. They just weren't fast enough on that day or the circumstances didn't allow for it. I think what we, our opportunity this year with Epicenter I mean, you can't stand here and compare him to Curlin and Gunrunner yet, but how they finished their career made them who they were. But he is running faster right now than they were when they got here. What makes this race so hard to win? I, I think it's an event more than it is a race, you know, and then, you know, you're being involved in horse racing my whole life. You, you know, The stories that are behind it, it's almost like it was meant to be before it happened.
how far in the race have you gotten to where you thought you were going to win? It, I mean, like Nero, I thought. I thought. I thought, I, I thought he was home. I did not pick up. You know, when I you saw, uh, he got to Shackleford, and you're you're watching. You, you know, watch enough races. You feel that he's got him. I look back at that moment. I didn't see Animal Kingdom coming, mm -hmm. so I literally know what it feels like to think you're going to win the Derby, <laughs> but it didn't happen. And then uh, also with uh, looking at Lee, you know, when. Corey cut the corner with him and the acceleration he showed by tiring horses it just looked like he was going fast enough to win and then always dreaming had enough left to hold him off but the the visual of those moments were you know it, you know goosebump exciting well what's it like to feel like you think you're gonna win the derby and then a few strides later perhaps the realization uh, well, on. I mean, there, there's so, <laughs> I, I got 23 different feelings <laughs> on the Derby, but I mean, like very vividly remember, you know, just Na thought Nero was going to win it, you know, going to win, you know, and then uh, looking at Lee when he cut it, it was just unbelievable. With Curlin, I, I just never dreamed he could get beat. I mean, uh, Curlin gave you so much car. I never dreamed he'd lose. You just try to temper your excitement and not say anything ridiculous or anything, but I never dreamed he'd get beat. And it felt like the walk over for Curlin's Derby took three strides and the walk back felt like the Sahara Desert, you know? And then he went to the test barn. We had run Zanero in the race also that year. And when, uh, you know, Zanero, good horse, you know, solid horse. I think he was only off the board twice in his life. Once, I think he was eighth in the Derby that year, you know? and. He was still blowing hard, and uh, Curlin came out of the test barn, and he was, you know, his strong, usual self. And, you know, are you going to run in the free? You know, he wanted, you just, man, it was enough, enough ability. It just wasn't meant to be. Compared to your confidence in Curlin, where does that decision stand? I, I think that the, the opportunities we've been given since Curlin has just spoiled us. To, to an immeasurable and when Curlin came around I mean he taught us things we didn't know like Never, what? how to win classics I you know I said um, the Winchell family and their whole team obviously oh, has been such yeah. a massive part of your career not that you need any extra motivation but the potential to be able to, oh, to, to it, deliver it, what you could deliver this you think of it day. you know we yeah. stand here talking about my over 23 experience and then I was listening you know the, the fun thing with Ron and David is, for me, is, you know, when it was Vern, Ron's dad, and coming down and uh, seeing their young horses at my parents' place and stuff, you know, me, me and Ron got to eat at the big people table, but we didn't get an opinion, you know, you just got, you know, so for us to be in this position now with a, possibly the favorite going into the Derby is uh, very special. And, you know, Ron, I think, one of the interviews I saw with him after the Derby, you know, he, him and his father talked about their pursuit of the Derby. And you think of, of how special that is. And I think that that's uh, probably a pretty common theme in a lot of racing families, you know, that are just uh, close to each other. Do you think 0 for 23 is a little overblown when you consider how many of those were 40 and 50 to 1 shots? I mean, well, I'm good at getting here. <laughs> I, mean, that, that, I mean, you know, that... Some of them they weren't fast enough, to, right? But you know, when I've had the horses that it wasn't meant to be, you know, maybe it's a who, who knows what the all of the reasons are. You know, I mean, whether they didn't run their best race that day or they were never good enough or anything. I do love being a part of it and, and enjoy and appreciate every opportunity that we've been given. And you know, I'm a horse trainer. You know, we're not. We're not smart enough to give up. You know, we're going to keep at it. What makes it so special for you? Why do you want to win it so bad? Oh, what? Well, <laughs> because it is the Kentucky Derby, and uh, it's you know attaining something that you haven't to you know, simply being spoiled, whatever reason you want to pick. But I, I've uh, you know obviously been extremely blessed with some amazing racehorses and. What I love about, uh, you know, the Curlins and the Rachels and the Gunrunners and the, 
Midnight v. Sues and stuff is how the fans feel about them. You know, when they talk to you about them. I mean, that's, I mean, that's the part about, you know, one of, one of their, you know, fan bases like that, you know, to feel that way about another one of your horses. Is it bigger than you? I mean, last year you came, you know, with horse owned by your parents, and yeah. they were part of it. But I mean, if you were to win the Derby, oh, would you for, just for me, uh, I, I think all all anybody, you know, horse trainer involved in racing. There are so many people and parts. Of, you know, the whole barn and how much it it means to them, and you know, every every one of their relatives, and you know, our organization is, you know pretty vast and has a whole bunch of people in it that care a whole lot. It's like everybody that ever puts their hands on the horse, works to the horse in whatever capacity, feels like they they own that horse. That they oh, have it's their care. horse. And when you, you see, you know, the we're, we're talking about uh, the job Wilson and Eddie have done working, them, you know, the company and stuff and just getting to this point and being part of the process and completely invested in it as well as, you know, their families and, you know, we want to see them have success uh, you know um, hopefully it's meant to be how much of this is the equity of the experience that are you more comfortable you seem more there's an equity in what you've gone through right there oh absolutely i mean uh, i've had i've had the disappointment and survived it you know you're you just realize you know um i, I think perspective you know since uh, getting the win total and stuff has made me look back and reflect and, uh, you know, just realize how blessed I am to have my family involved in it and just how meaningful it's again. It's become a lot more emotional for me because of how, how blessed and the success that we've had. And, you know, it, the excitement of everybody coming for the Derby, feeling like you have a good chance, you know, just it's... Uh, it, it uh, like you said, it, it makes it extremely special. What about the oaks and, and that field? The way it's shaping up, or what, the unbelievable! It, what a what a group of fillies that are assembled for it, and how well they're doing right now. It's you know every one of the preps that you watch, uh, you know it's an, another horse that looks unbeatable. But they there will be one winner on, one winner of the oaks on Friday. Is um, Morel is he going to work tomorrow? Uh, we're we're going to back off of him and stuff. Just the foot isn't 100%. You know, he blew the shoe in the in the wood and, um, you know, spoke with the partners and just going to do what's right by him. Try to get some healthy foot grown out on him. But uh, he's too good of a horse to um, not do any, not do everything you can for him. Where is Echo Zulu right now versus going into the um, Fairgrounds Oaks Wells, her first race off the long layoff? Um, <laughs> you know, all she Echo Zulu did for it, you know, the last year, first crop of gun runner, you know, three grade ones and four races and a championship, you know, some time off. She's not a big filly in stature, you know, she, she's strong and attractive as can be and, uh, you know, obviously extremely talented. Gave her a break uh, off of, you know, a well-deserved break. And then for her to win the Fairgrounds Oaks, I think it was a 141-day layoff. I, I think that uh, was extremely impressive. It, um, she will be required uh, to run uh, considerably faster um, in, in the Kentucky Oaks to have success. But also, I can't remember. Um, there's been a lot of very good winners of the Fairgrounds Oaks, and I can't remember any of them using it as their first their first and only prep for the Kentucky Oaks. She really showed a competitiveness in the stretch there. She dug oh, down. Looked there. like a champion. She looked like a champion. But that she is one. Mm. What what is it about her is the personality that makes her that special? Uh, the ability, you know. I mean, uh, it's a race. Sometimes it's just that simple. But I'm Be sure being fast comes in really handy. But I'm sure you've had horses that have a lot of talent, and they just don't have it between the ears, and it's hard to. Oh, I, I, I think or absolutely. Or talent. You got to have the mind to have the well, talent. And when you're when you've run, let's see, when you've run four times and three win three Grade Ones on three different racetracks, I think you've shown a, a hardiness or a, a mind that is not uh, that is 
extremely rare in a two-year-old filly. I mean, I, it's hard it's hard to imagine a, a more impressive two-year-old filly season than hers. We always have the question, can they get a mile and a quarter? With that Louisiana Derby now being a little longer and the way he was moving at the end of it, is that, does that kind of take that question out of it? Yeah, it, it definitely takes that question out of it, except for the fact that who did you do it against, you know? I mean, how, I always think it's funny how far people talk about how far one can run. <laughs> Depends on who they're in against, you know? But uh, tremendous, tremendously talented group of horses coming in, and um, I, I, I see or understand or it's quite obvious why um, so many people would like them but I'm not looking to change places with anybody and uh, feel that uh, Epicenter up to a mile and a 3 16ths is as fast as any horse going in, if not fastest. I mean, I think, I think that, uh, you know, fast race is in good company, but uh, we do know that uh, them coming to visit him at the fairgrounds was an advantage for him. But uh, he's done, he has improved since, but everybody needs to continue to improve. Uh, to have success uh, going forward.